August 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Galatians chapter 5 from the New Testament. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you at all. And I testify again to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be declared righteous by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we wait expectantly for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision carries any weight. The only thing that matters is faith working through love. You were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast makes a whole batch of dough rise. I am confident in the Lord that you will accept no other view, but the one who is confusing you will pay the penalty, whoever he may be. Now, brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those agitators would go so far as to castrate themselves. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity to indulge your flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law can be summed up in a single commandment. Namely, you must love your neighbor as yourself. However, if you continually bite and devour one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh has desires that are opposed to the Spirit, and the Spirit has desires that are opposed to the flesh. For these are in opposition to each other, so that you cannot do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, depravity, idolatry, sorcery, hostilities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish rivalries, dissensions, factions, envying, murder, drunkenness, carousing, and similar things. I am warning you, as I had warned you before, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also behave in accordance with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, being jealous of one another. God, for any of us that have gone to Sunday school or attended some sort of youth event, we were probably taught the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23, we were taught to memorize it, be able to repeat it. Anytime you mention fruits of the Spirit to most kids, they can rattle those off. But I think what we miss is the part before it, the works of the flesh and the things that we need to be highly aware of as they constantly fight and oppose the fruits of the Spirit. We can do all the things of the flesh pretty well on our own. <laughs> We as human beings filled with sin left to our own devices are going to choose sin. We're going to choose flesh. Um, without you, we know no better than to choose our own desires and our own wants and our own ego. And then we go to the list that is with you, we can have the fruits of the spirit. Now, there's a lot of people that exhibit the fruits of the spirit. Um, in worldly terms, love and joy and peace. We all know people who exhibit those types of things, but that doesn't mean that they are fruits of the Spirit. That with you, these become something different. A lot of people experience and share love, but it's a worldly type of love where they don't put others 
above themselves. They don't love others as you have loved us. The peace that I have in my life is not a worldly peace. It's a peace that settles into my heart and settles into my day-to-day living that knows I can count on you, that knows I am your child, that knows you love me unconditionally. It's a peace, as the Bible says, that passes all understanding. And we can go through each of these, but they can only happen with you, God. These are not worldly uh, fruits. <laughs> these are definitely fruits of the Spirit. And so I think we, we need to be highly aware that it's not just the fruits of the Spirit and what we exhibit with you, but we have to be wholly aware of what the, the flesh will exhibit. Uh, the reason being is if we practice such things, meaning if they're consistent in our lives as choices, if we're consistently anger, angry, if we consistently seek other ways to uh, seek you or to seek other gods than what you have commanded us to do. Um, if if we want to have sex outside of marriage, all of these things that if we leave them consistently in our lives and we don't bring in you to deal with them um, there is a very severe warning with that so such things will not inherit the kingdom of God meaning we're probably not saved at that point that if we seek and pursue those fleshly desires and don't set them aside and don't seek your strength in actually exhibiting the fruits of the spirit in our lives then there is probably a good chance that you don't reside in our heart uh, that we don't seek you out, that we don't have this passionate relationship with you, that we're not humble to you and obedient to you. All of the things that you call us to do. God, I just, I just pray that we keep that list in our hearts. Um, not to go out and do any of those things, but to remind ourselves that if we are angry or if we're jealous or some jealous of something or if we envy something. Or if we act out in sexually inappropriate ways, that those aren't things of you. And that gets really scary that those are things not of you. Those are worldly things. Those are things uh, that Satan uses to tempt us away from a life with you. Those are things that fulfill base desires in us. And I think we need to keep those kind of in the back of our head, understanding that if they start to show up in our lives, we've got to figure out why they're there and why they're not fighting against the fruits of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit aren't winning. It has nothing to do with your strength and power because we know that you can overcome anything. It has to do with us and our obedience to your word. Are we in your word every day? Are we praying to you constantly throughout the day to keep us pure and humble and understanding what loving others actually means, that commandment? Or are we just giving in to all the desires of our flesh? And if we're giving in to all the desires of our flesh, are we truly children of yours? Thank you, God, for putting such amazing, powerful words into our thought process today. Many of us, like I said, have heard the fruits of the Spirit and can rattle them off without even a thought. But when you read it in the totality of what Paul is talking about, it brings on a whole new meaning of that constant day in and day out battle against our selfish, wanton desires of the flesh versus what you seek for us, which is always going to be better than whatever we want. God, I thank you for loving us enough that with you, we can have the fruits of the Spirit and we can live a life that is filled with love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In your son's name I pray. Amen.